Hey, how's it going, sir? Hey, man, ain't about nothing. Another day in life. You know, it's a nice day out here. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, nice You're to meet you, too. here with Fox. I'm Amen. here with All Time Media, and I'll be conducting your interview. What's up? So what's your name? Jules. Jules? Yes, sir. That's a cool name. That's my uncle's name. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Okay, there's a lot of Jules out here. Right. Yeah, Shout out to Huli Shout out to Jules, his uncle. Big up, son. <laughs> How old are you, Jules? Man, I'm 51. 51? Yes, sir. God bless okay, you. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. You look young for 51, man. Oh, thanks, man. I was taking real good care of myself, man, for a, while, for a little while in these streets, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Taking care of myself. Just relapse, that's all. A little relapse. I had 15 years. Off and on during the earlier years, but I had 15 years of some strong recovery. You know what I mean? And I was running 13 miles every three days. Yeah. Ran the Broad Street run. Helped my mom, you know, through the COVID situation. Helped my brother through a broken neck. My daughter came from Atlanta. Was chilling with the PUA money, extra cash. You know what I mean? I did good. I, I thank God that for that time while I was sober, I got to help my family. And then at the end of all of that chaos and confusion, getting evicted, living in North Philly, getting ready to get evicted, not working, PUA money coming, daughter coming, not working. I came through all that, got evicted, got another apartment with the money. My brother and my aunt. My brother and my, my, my brother and my mom healed up, and then my daughter came down. We had a f ma fabulous time down Art Museum. All, I took her everywhere in Philly. We was chilling. And then at the end of all of that, it's kind of like when my daughter leave, I get kind of raggedy. You know what I mean? When she go back, I get kind of raggedy. Then I just relapse. Right. How long ago was this? Uh, last year. Last year. Last year she just left? Yeah, she left last summer. Last summer. It was terrible. Was she just visiting? Uh, yeah, she came down for my birthday and her birthday. Her birthday is July 7th, mine was July 29th, and she stayed from June all the way to about my birthday. Yeah, we had a great time. PUA, shout out to PUA, extra money. <laughs> you were clean during the time you Yeah, were I was clean. I was doing my yoga, my meditations, my chakras, my crystals, studying, doing my lectures, doing a lot of like, you know, a lot of like sacred geometry, getting in tune with the earth and breathing, and I had hawks following me when I run, bro. Yeah, it's foul. That's a lot of hobbies, man. Yeah, I had a lot of tools in my toolkit. I just said, fuck it, man. I got tired. I told my mom probably during the COVID time when she couldn't walk. She fell and broke her arm. Then my brother broke his neck and came to my apartment that I was getting evicted from before my daughter even came down when I was out of work. That, you know, all of that was going on. And then during that time, I was, you know, it took a lot out of me. You know, I was doing a lot for my family. And then um, after everything was over, it's like the hero at the end of the movie, like, oh, I won, but then he collapses. So that's what I did, kind of collapsed and went back to my old vices. I told my mom a little bit into that year before COVID came how sick I was of paying bills and paying rent and paying car insurance, paying internet, paying phone bill, going food shopping, like being to myself so much here in Philly with all the nonsense that I've been through, through relapse and addictions and vices and stuff like that. A lot of people talk a lot and I got a real bad temper. So I used to hold in a lot of stress. And from where I'm from, West Philly, if you, you know, you know about certain letter names about you know mafia stuff down. I used to be involved with a lot of guys selling a lot of drugs, and I got shot six times. I'm a, used to be a very violent person, but I learned to humble myself for my daughter's sake. I remember one time I was at GameStop. I had to promise my daughter that I would never carry a gun because somebody behind us in line was you know saying, "Hurry up, where's your receipt?" Behind us, and you know I didn't have my receipt because I brought my daughter the same game as her mom did for Christmas one year, and I had to take it back. And I brought my daughter with me so she could pick out what she wanted. And this guy behind us was talking trash. You ever see the movie where the guy puts his kid in the car and goes back and trashes the dude? That's what I kind of did. And my daughter was crying. She she never let me forget it. So I promised her after that I would never like be violent or carry guns and none of that stuff ever again. So I did that. 15, 20 years, man, doing good. Spiritual as hell. It might not seem like it, but like, you know, chakras and kundalini all day, lectures and consciousness. You know, that's all I was about. And started exercise, running, getting in tune with my mind, my body, and my earth, and my God, and then people. You know, trying to see what, what it was in me that was in other people so I could have a commonality with other people and, and stop being so to myself because I'm very social. <laughs> it was antisocial. I, I stayed to myself a lot. I'm surprised I'm even doing the video, but you know, I'm out here in my addiction, and, and it's like that. And it's, it helps somebody, then it's a blessing. And it might help me too, because I was on my way. Yeah. Now, how were you introduced? Introduced? Oh man, drugs. I sold drugs. I sold everything. I sold crack, weed, pills, coke, powder, fucking heroin. I sold everything in West Philly. We used to be with, I don't want to mention no names, it's a certain click in West Philly. And I just sold drugs to like 
you know, get some Snickers and stuff. I wanted to sell weight. I didn't want to have a pack. So I, 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 for like maybe four months, I didn't spend no money. How so, were you introduced to, you know, to selling drugs like that? Oh, my family was into the mafia thing, JVM. I hate to say it. I just say JVM. A lot of brothers that was in my house as my family. And, um, you know, it's in my house. I come home from playing football. <laughs> I didn't smoke cigarettes, drink, and do nothing until I got out of high school. And I swear to God, I would never do it. And then when I got tired of asking my mom for $20 to take my son's, my first son's mom uh, to the movies on the, <laughs> on the weekend. And everybody be in the park. You know the park. Shout it out. Black Oak, Malcolm X Park, 52nd Street. And, uh, you know, the jewels, man. Why don't you go get some of this money? Every time I walk through there to go to the store, you get a sausage. Yo, get this money. What you doing? You lunch it. You try to ask Bobby for money. That's what my brother would say. Then I just started hustling. A lot of guys got indicted, and then I started hustling. For me to even start selling drugs after, like, you know, seeing how it do and what it do to people in my spirituality, even then at the time, I would think I'd never do it. But Did anything happen that day you first picked up? Was there anything? Oh, yeah. It was a big thing. My son's mom disappeared with my first son. I haven't seen him since he was six. Mm. Yeah. So I remember I was in the crib, one of my co cribs, but I was so I said, man, D, give me that. Let me see what this shit do. And I smoked crack. You know, I just had picked up because my son's mom left with my son and disappeared. I ain't seen him since he was six. So I was in a co crib where I sold drugs at, and I was, you know, telling my boys and, and, and some of my fiends that was in the crib what happened. They was trying to console me, keep me calm. And then after some of my boys left to do what they was doing, I had nice shit for like I always did. And me and my boys sitting in there, and I said, yo, man, let me see what that shit do, because I was pissed off. Just bugging and shit, just tripping. I tried it and I was like, yo, this shit don't do nothing. What are you doing? Why are you smoking crack for it? Shit ain't nothing. I said, man, you ain't doing it right. So how am I doing it? So he showed me how to do it the right way. And I was like, okay, now I don't know what you're talking about. Then after that, you know, it wasn't even like I kept doing it. I just always snorted and coke and did drugs and smoked weed, drank and zannies and all the pills and shit, but nobody never smoked no hard. We might smoke a love boat with some laces and it wasn't really, you know, it was, it was regular because everybody got high and hustled. So it'll give you some energy while you're out there. When you're up all night for days and days and out in the streets and not even home, you know, give you energy. So we all got high, but nobody never really did crack. I know I didn't. After so, that, after that first experience, was it off to the races? Were you like exposing it? How did you no, know? it was a pump fake with it. It was just that. And then, like I said, a lot of shit happened. A lot of people got indicted and it you was just like- using. Oh, using? No, yeah, it wasn't. That first, time. that first time it wasn't off to the races. It was just that and then my, I went back to my regular get high stuff, and then once everybody got indicted, shit kind of fell apart. I got shot six times right there on 52nd Street. I came out the hospital. I wasn't the same. I had to take medication to calm down. My mom threw to me like 13 times because I was running around with guns, shooting at people, acting crazy, trying to find everybody that this had something to do with it. And, um, you know, that went that way. And then once I was on the medication... I remember being in a facility and I left like a CRC house or one of them homes where they got the people and you're not home. And I started smoking then and then it was off to the races. What made you such a violent person growing up? Uh, just the fact that my brothers always did everything for me. Like JBM people, like I, everybody, oh, the kid best with jewels. They never wanted me to sell drugs. Everybody always was like, I had like a lot of people over me that people wouldn't fuck with me. They were like, that's that bull brother. They used to call my brother a certain name, Murder Mike. <laughs> Used to do his for, for them and stuff like that. Used to do certain things. And, and I was like the baby boy. I ain't had to do nothing. Then I just used to cap up. And then when people got indicted, got involved, that's when I got my cribs, got my weight. I sold drugs for six months and I made a lot of money. Your brother got indicted too? No. Nah, he never. <laughs> funny thing about my brother, he don't get caught for that. He good. He never got caught for that. He get caught for other shit. And he's in addiction as well. Like when you got a family line of addiction, drugs and that kind of stuff, it, you, you fall into it. You know what I mean? That's what happened with me. I just kind of fell into it. I got tired of asking my mom for $20. <laughs> and then when my daughter, I mean, my son's mom left with my son, that still gets to me today. That's probably part of the reason why I'm here in my relapse now, because my daughter left. This other girl had a kid by me, and she disappeared. I just seen him while I got the job in a, what's the name, on a Zoom camera video <laughs> for the first time at six years old, and I was pissed off. Okay, Jules. I'd like to thank you for your time. Yeah, no doubt. No I doubt. wish you the best of luck. I'm hey, man. so sorry you kind of got thrown into this lifestyle. Hey, man, you, you know, know sorry. kind of being a product of your environment. This is kind of how you was brought up, and certain people don't understand. They'll judge you, read you like a book. Like, like They'll assume that you just chose this lifestyle. Yeah. It wasn't chosen. This is the lifestyle that... Yeah, it's like being know. born in a Muslim family. You just kind of be that... <laughs> 
You know what I mean? You, you kind of grew up in a bad environment, and it just was your ways of making money and surviving. Yeah. And it led to addiction. You fell into it, like you said. Yeah, trap, trap doors. Yeah. Right. Russian dolls. Selling <laughs> drugs, they're using drugs. Yeah. It's crazy, so it can happen. Don't think you're just going to be out there, Dino Brown, and going to jail. Something else might happen to you. Yeah. Get shot and on drugs. Then homeless. 51. Yay. Get but it's going to come up. Get yourself to a rehab. No doubt. ASAP, man. No doubt. It's in the works. It's in the works. Right. I'd like to thank you for your time. No doubt. Thank you. for me, Jules. Yeah, no doubt. All Time Media be praying for me. All right, what's up? Join All Time Media's Patreon for exclusive content and behind the scenes content and face to face live video chat. Thank you, guys. The link is in the description below.